Good morning everyone. Our today's topic of discussion is cell block techniques. So we'll see in short what is the history, what is a cell block, what are different methods for cell block preparation, what are the advantages and disadvantages of cell block. So coming to history, the cell block was first implemented more than a century ago by Baron work for acidic fluids and more widely accepted in practice in 1947. In 1896, the cell block was prepared in celluloid in medium. In 1901, centrifugation was used to increase the cellularity. In 1959, bacterial agar was introduced. In 1973, the plasma thrombin clot method was introduced. And in 2007, the automated cell block system that is salient was discovered. So, what is a cell block? so basically cell block is a method of preparing a cytological material so that it can be processed section stained and viewed as a histology section so it is nothing but a microbiopsy that is embedded in formalin so the cell block acts as a bridge between the cytology and histopathology so what kinds of specimens can be used in cell block preparation basically all the samples that come for cytology can be used which includes the fnac sample the sputum the urine effusion fluids and lavages so coming to methods of cell block preparation there are n number of methods in literature but we will see only those method that are used commonly so first one is the direct sedimentation method then the plasma thrombin method shidam's method automated cell block system and next generation cell blocking kits so coming to our first method which is a direct sedimentation method it is best used when the large quantity of sediment is obtained that is more than 1 ml so what we do here we centrifuge centrifuge our sample then we discard the supernatant then we add equal volumes of fixative to the sediment most commonly used fixative is formalin only then we mix it thoroughly then we keep it overnight in a refrigerator and then we pour the sediment onto a filter paper and we keep it in a, a label tissue cassette then we put our cassette in a jar containing fixative and we process it like a tissue specimen so coming to next method which is a plasma thromboplastin method it is useful when the quantity of sediment is very scant that is less than 0.5 ml here again what we do is we centrifuge the sample at 3000 revolution per minute for 15 minutes then we discard the supernatant then we add drops of cool plasma to the sediment and we mix it then we add few drops of thromboplastin and we mix it again then the tube is allowed to stand for 5 minute so that the clot is formed the formed clot is then dislodged and it is then wrapped in a filter paper and it is placed in a label tissue cassette then we put our label tissue cassette in a jar containing fixative at least for 4 hours and then we process it like a normal tissue specimen so this is the schematic diagram of plasma thromboplastin method this is our sample then we centrifuge it here you can see this is a supernatant and th this is the sediment then we discard our supernatant then we add plasma and thromboplastin and allow it to form a clot then that clot is removed and it is Uh, given for histological sections so there are some technical consideration in the plasma thromboplastin method the cool plasma can be preserved in freezer up to 1 month the thromboplastin should be stored at 2 to 8 degrees celsius the reagent should be brought to room temperature before processing we should use different pipette to take out plasma and thromboplastin and if the clot is not formed within 10, uh, within 5 minute uh fresh plasma should be used or we should repeat the procedure um before starting the procedure we should check the expiry date of thromboplastin and the anticoagulated samples are not useful for this technique so coming to shidham's method the basic principle of shidham's method is to concentrate the cells along a plane which is parallel to the cutting surface of cell block and also there is one inclusion that is av marker is used so what is av marker av marker the name is given um on the basis of anjani vinod marker it is discovered by dr shridham vinod it is nothing but a 2 by 2 mm fragment of dark colored sectionable material and it is made with a banana peel and india ink preparation what it does 
it helps to visualize the level at which the cells are mostly concentrated so this is the procedure this is a schematic diagram which shows the uh, shidam's method uh, basically in shidam's method what we do is we use two kinds of test tubes the inner glass test tube and the outer plastic test tube here you can see both of the tubes are having flat bottoms okay so the cells are concentrated parallel to the cutting surface um here this is the sediment we are going to transfer our sediment into a smaller glass tube then we are going to close our tube then we will place the inner smaller tube into a larger plastic tube and we we'll, uh, we will centrifuge our sample then we will discard our, our supernatant and the av marker that is a black colored inclusion will be added to the inner glass tube after that we will add a histogel which is nothing but a agarose gel and the histogel will solidify outside so to prevent its solidification uh, we will add hot water into the outer test tube and we will centrifuge it so because of the centrifugation the av marker will be embedded at the level of maximum cellularity then we cool our histogel and finally uh, we pour drop by drop the uh, 10% formalin mixture so that our cell block will be dislodged and we can process it as a histopathological section so this is the short video of shidam's method to begin this procedure transfer about 0.5 mL of the preferably concentrated specimen to a 45 mm long flat bottom glass tube with a 15 mm diameter Next place the glass tube into a large flat bottom plastic carrier tube and centrifuge at 1800 Gs for 5 minutes at room temperature. After centrifugation, remove the flat bottom glass tube from the plastic carrier tube and pour off the supernatant taking care not to disturb the flat layer of cell sediment at the bottom. A dark beacon on Johnny Vinod or AV marker is added to the cells as a signpost. After the cells are embedded, an AV marker serves to identify the level at which the cells are concentrated within the paraffin block. Using a special pipette, add a previously prepared AV marker flat surfaced cube to the cells in the tube. Now begin the process of adding the gel. Liquefy an aliquot of histogel or HG by melting it in a microwave for 10 seconds at medium power or follow the manufacturer's instructions. Add 0.5 milliliters of the molten HG to the tube containing the sedimented cells, quickly mix and recap the tube. Proceed immediately to adding about 2.5 milliliters of warm water at 45 degrees Celsius to the carrier plastic tube. Then insert the capped glass tube containing the cells, the AV marker, and the histogel. Working quickly and using warm water prevents the gel from solidifying during subsequent steps. Next, centrifuge to push the AV marker through the gel and to concentrate the cells into a layer which will be closer to the cutting surface of the final paraffin embedded cell block. Use swiveling cups and not fixed angle cups so that the cells concentrate perpendicularly to the flat bottom of the glass tube and spin at 1800 Gs for 5 minutes at room temperature. When the centrifugation is complete, remove the tubes gently and vertically from the centrifuge, taking care not to disturb the thin sediment layer of cells at the bottom. Using forceps, remove the smaller glass tube vertically without disturbing the sediment layer of specimen cells. Finally, refrigerate the small glass tube in a vertical position for 15 minutes to cool and solidify the gel. At the end of 15 minutes, proceed to remove the gel containing the cells from the glass tube. To dislodge the solidified HG disc, which contains a layer of concentrated specimen at the bottom, along with a dark colored AV marker, use a 23 gauge needle attached to a syringe filled with 10% formalin. Start by inserting the needle along the side of the tube at the periphery of the solidified HG disc. Continue by rotating the needle along the side of the tube while at the same time slowly pushing the formalin solution through the syringe. Observe the separation of the HG button from the flat bottom of the glass tube. 
the separated gel button containing the dark colored beacon AV marker and the so this was all about Shidam's method. To begin this. So coming to automated cell block system, which is a salient cell blocks. Here, what we do is we centrifuge our sample uh, for 10 minutes and then we discard the supernatant. After vortexing for one minute, the cell pellet is transferred to a preserve site, which is nothing but a methanol based fixative and it is fixed for 20 minutes. Then we load the vial into a machine, which is a fully automated machine. What it does, uh, through a vacuum assisted filtration, the cells in the vial are transferred onto a membrane of the cassette. And at the end, the cells are stained with eosin, dehydrated in isopropanol, cleared in xylene, and it is infused in formalin. And the cell blocks will be ready in 40 minutes. So coming to next generation cell blocking kits, uh, these are the kits which are based on Shidam's method. So each unit contains a preformed sponge disc with veils and built-in AV marker to control the depth of cutting. Here you can appreciate this is a this is one kit and here this is a sponge disc with veils. The cell, uh, the cells of interest will be concentrated in into these veils. So coming to procedure. In micro next generation cell blocking, this is the uh, micro kit and what we do uh, after centrifugation, we add the concentrated specimen onto the sponge disc. Then we wait for 10 minutes so that excess of fluid will be absorbed on this absorbent pad. After that, we add 10% of formalin and again we wait for 10 minutes so that excess of formalin will get absorbed. Then we discard the sponge disc and after after that it is processed like a routine histopath section so this is how the micro unit looks with a paraffin embedded section these are the wells and this is the av marker which is a sectionable black colored inclusion and on histopath uh, here you can appreciate your AV marker and these are the diagnostic cells in the well. So to compare the cellularity in conventional method and micro next generation cell blocking kit, here you can appreciate very well there is less cellularity in the conventional method and uh, in micro next generation cell blocking kits, the cellularity is very good and you can appreciate uh, the patterns also very nicely. So coming to advantages of cell block, so it is very simple, readily adaptable and easily reproducible material, uh, method. It serves as a routine source of multiple histological section, even if the sample has been discarded. IHC can be performed on effusion sample and which is helpful to differentiate between reactive mesothelial cells or mesothelioma from adenocarcinoma. There is preservation of architectural patterns like cell block, walls, papillae, three-dimensional clusters. Also, the yield is increased by 5% in cancer cases. And lastly, the storage of cell block is easier than unstained slides. Coming to the advantages of cell block, it is a skill dependent technique. There can be sample loss while separating the supernatant from the cells of interest. There can be incomplete pellet formation and there can be randomness of depth of cutting, leading to suboptimum cellularity of final tissue sections. My references. Thank you.